Hi, my name is Sharon. We hope you have enjoyed watching the earlier presentations as well as the tech sessions. Our users have shared some of the challenges which they have experienced in their daily operations and described some very creative ways in which ArcGIS technology was used to resolve them. Safe distance at end parks illustrated how they leveraged on the geospatial platform to communicate crowd levels at public parks in this challenging period. SLA and a vision of providing access to 3D geospatial data and building models to both public and private sectors. Norman Disney and Young, with their circular key rejuvenation project, showed how they captured and consolidated various 2D and 3D data sets in the geospatial infrastructure. And lastly, NUS described their vision of enabling smart campus management through the incorporation of BIM in GIS and integration with other systems. All of those who shared their story today, and I'm very sure it applies to a lot of you listening in right now, are faced with challenges that prevent you from optimizing your efficiency and productivity. And very often, these challenges stem from disparate sources of data, requiring you to access different pieces of information, going through different systems and interfaces, and trying to make sense of them. Notwithstanding the challenge of communicating back to multiple groups of stakeholders, addressing and overcoming these challenges requires better understanding and communication. It requires collaboration. It will require our best technology and you as critical design thinking and problem solving GIS professionals. And this is where we start by using GIS to organize our world's geographic knowledge. It consolidates data and analyses, organizing them as data models, then visualizing them as maps and charts, reports, story maps, dashboards, and infographics. It creates a consolidated visual of our data that help us see things from different perspectives and can be used to drive and organize our workflows. GIS provides us a process and a framework for not only creating and storing this knowledge, but also for applying it. We can measure, we visualize, we analyze, and plan and design. We try to make sense of data, to make data-driven decisions before we proceed to take further action. This framework is what we call geospatial infrastructure. You have seen some really great examples of how geospatial infrastructure is transforming organizations and redefining workflows. Our users are incorporating real-time data streaming in from various IoT sensors, few apps that empower mobile workflows, and web apps that enable the community through the sharing of information. We have also seen growing interest in new technologies like advanced spatial analytics, AI and machine learning, cloud computing and containerization. It is emerging rapidly and it is taking the form of integrated systems of distributed content and capabilities. Individual systems are beginning to link together and share their data, interconnecting and bringing in services from external sources. This forms an ecosystem of distributed services, data and geospatial tools, bringing people together to collaborate and use information in new and meaningful ways. And we can do this integration so effectively because of our support of data in various types and formats. ArcGIS is able to take in both vector and raster data, including imagery, 3D data in various forms like 3D models, CAD and BIM, and also LiDAR and point cloud data. We connect with real-time and big data sources and also unstructured data sources. All of these data flow into the geospatial infrastructure, 
making them available as ready-to-use services for web maps and applications. Today, we are putting our focus on specific types of data that are more commonly seen in a built environment. The latest ArcGIS integration tool allows you to connect directly to a cloud repository of CAD and BIM from ArcGIS Pro. The cloud repository is Autodesk's online platform for connecting project teams to data, Autodesk BIM 360. With this new integration to ArcGIS Pro, GIS professionals are able to get access to engineering data stored in BIM 360. This makes way for a more efficient process for updating information. Utility companies are able to streamline the process in which contractors submit as built drawings in CAD and use that to update their network data. Building owners will be able to visualize the latest building models and floor plans and use that to plan for upcoming works. Let's take a look at the integration in action. To access the files stored on my BIM360 account, I will first need to add a new BIM connection in ArcGIS Pro. This will prompt me with a sign-in page where I am able to enter my BIM360 account credentials. I will need to allow data access in order for me to browse the files in ArcGIS Pro. Once I'm signed in, I will be able to see the contents of my BIM repository directly in my catalog pane, which would include Revit and CAD files. The integration allows me to just drag and drop my desired Revit file to my map, and the data will download from my BIM360 account. Once it is downloaded, I can turn on the required layers in my contents pane and zoom in on the BIM to visualize the details. In addition to being able to load BIM files directly in ArcGIS Pro, the integration also supports CAD files. The engineering drawings that you see here are water pipe CAD drawings uploaded in BIM 360. What makes the integration so powerful is the ability to check the status of the CAD file to see if there's any update. There's a new version available. By clicking on Refresh, the latest data will be loaded on the map. And you will see that the pipeline now extends to the new building. This new tool changes the way utility companies manage the flow of data coming in from contractors. It ensures that contractors and utility data and editors can communicate asset information in a seamless and timely fashion. The exchange of data between the geospatial infrastructure and the project lifecycle helps energize the process where better decisions can be made. Spatial analysis in GIS help determine the most suitable site for a new construction and the resulting polygon meeting all regulatory criteria is fed into the project lifecycle for detailed building design. The ease of porting BIM data into the geospatial infrastructure enables the study of the impact a new construction may have on its surroundings, enabling designs to be fine-tuned to better fit the location. An illustration of this integration is seen in this next demo. Estate design typically starts on a macro scale, from the land parcels allotted to the development. Preliminary 3D models can be generated in the GIS taking into account maximum height and gross floor area restrictions, producing various scenarios of differing building heights for assessment. It feeds into the project life cycle as bounding cages within which detailed engineering design of the building happens. Bringing the design beam back into the GIS, we see the interactions of the built and natural environment at play. Greater consideration can be made to study the impact a new construction can have on its surroundings, enabling designs to be fine-tuned to better fit the location. Amenities like public transport nodes and roads can be planned to meet the future demand, 
and landscape design can be done with awareness of the built environment. It brings possibilities to perform shadow and line of sight analysis, solar irradiation, or simply just visualizing the building against the existing and proposed landscape. As the project life cycle moves into construction, drone imagery taken at regular intervals is often used to document the construction progress. Bringing the elements of time from BIM into GIS enables the ability to animate the construction plan against schedule. Coupled with laser scans and drone images, tracking of construction progress and verification of construction against design can take place. In the area of estate management, keeping track of occupancy rates and tenant mix is often an important factor to ensuring the viability of the estate. The floor plans of the building brought into the GIS enables this conception of space and status. It can also be extended to monitoring environmental factors like temperature and humidity or operational status like energy consumption or crowd levels. Lastly, in the operations and maintenance stage, the BIM provides the context and backdrop which facilities management officers can locate incidents and tag service cases as GIS features and using these features to store status updates and images collected on site. Bringing BIM into the geospatial infrastructure enhances the work that can be done with ArcGIS system of urban planning tools. This system is a suite of apps that collectively help a planner to manage 3D data and evaluate the impact of various 2D and 3D plans. A powerful procedural engine enables planners to quickly generate multiple 3D building scenarios using parametric rules. Looking further into one of these apps, ArcGIS Urban is a web-based application designed for planners and urban developers. It helps with zoning and creation of land use plans. It is where we see building models and BIM being integrated into a rich 3D map interface. An analysis like line of sight can be performed. It is used to assess and compare the impact of various plans and scenarios to decide which plan best, best meets a district or city's objectives. Moving in from the outside, we have ArcGIS Indoors. It supports the management of all the building and campus information, incorporating BIM and uses CAD drawings to build indoor maps. It supports facility operations like problem reporting, asset management, and mapping for safety and security. It also includes a space management app that supports space planning, workspace scheduling, and particularly these days, safe distancing. In the area of occupant experience, RGS Indoors supports indoor wayfinding and offers device tracking capabilities to support finding and tracking people and assets indoors. Tune in to the upcoming technical session by Morocot, which will feature ArcGIS indoors in greater detail. To bring in the concept of community and campus management, we have ArcGIS Hub, an extension of ArcGIS Online. It is a system for collaboration and engagement, a system to empower your community with relevant data and GIS capabilities. A great example of how Hub has been widely adopted is in supporting COVID-19 efforts. It provides the community with the essential information it needs to manage and live with the restrictions of COVID-19 and keeps the community updated with the latest news and figures. ArcGIS Hub has dramatically improved the management of the pandemic in the community by bringing appropriate information to the right audience at the right time. 
the evidence is in the 5,000 and growing number of data hubs set up for COVID using ArcGIS Hub. We've covered some very specific geo-enabled workflows, which have been transformed by the tools that ArcGIS has brought into the hands of its practitioners, and illustrated how the integration of CAD and BIM can provide a foundation on which indoor mapping and urban planning workflows can be augmented through the richness of ArcGIS capabilities. Boon Hong, it's really exciting for me to see that Ashri is building bridges in its technology to enable new ways of accessing data that they need and integrating workflows. I'm sure you have also seen how other geo-enabled systems have helped your users change the way they work with their data and workflows. We will start with Business Analyst, which has been around for several years. It is a system of connected apps, workflows, business, and demographic data. The infographic reports that supports decision making around site selection, territory analysis, and targeted marketing. It's been popular in private sector organizations like real estate, and increasingly, it has been used in public sector for economic development and in some emergency management organizations like FEMA. The last geo-enabled system we will talk about is ArcGIS Mission. It's about tactical situation awareness and collaboration. It's about linking people who run a mission like fire or rescue or a disaster response with the people that are actually in the field using GeoChat or peer-to-peer -peer communications. So it supports the planning of a mission, then monitoring of the team activities during the mission with communication going back and forth, and the replay of activities after the fact for analysis. Examples of mission planning we have had for major events are like National Day Parade, Boston Marathon. S3 has put together a ready-to-go deploy system to enable event planning and to support collaboration among many agencies. A good example of using 3D modeling together with BIM model is to help rescue planners, firefighters to execute rescue plans swiftly from outdoor to indoor with readily available BIM information. Firefighters and rescuers can now be empowered with reliable terrain and building information to navigate confidently and safely. This year, we are seeing a lot of new tools that has been made available through our desktop platform, ArcGIS Pro, a professional GIS on the desktop used for mapping, visualization, editing, analytics. So naturally, that forms a large portion of our favorite new enhancements for this year. The list includes autosave capability, map graphics, boxer layers, suitability analysis, and many more. But that's not all. We can look forward to more enhancement in the upcoming versions, which include machine learning capability for point clouds, autosave and map graphics, and having layer to be able to sketch on top of a map and voxel. Big data connections are built right into the platform and for advanced users, things like link analysis or predictive modeling are going to be very attractive and more is coming. Now, Sharon and myself have specially selected our top five favorite tools to share with you. For suitability modeler, you can identify the best site locations or areas to preserve using these tools on the anal analysis tab. It's available with the spatial analyst extension. This dynamic exploratory environment of interactive paints, plots, and maps allows you to create and refine suitability models. Suitability models can determine the best location to build a shopping center, housing development, 
or holiday resort. They can also find the best areas to set aside for parks, green corridors, and natural reserves, or for flood control. An applicable example of urban rescue services is on operation planning and rescue mission. Suitability modeler can help us planner to identify potential areas which may restrict deployment of specific rescue equipment due to landscape and space constraints. It will allow rescue planner to come up with various mitigation scenarios. Now, let me bring you to my next favorite planning tool. Co-location analysis tool measures local patterns of spatial association between two categories of point features. The tools create a representation on the likelihood of two different groups of objects and events that are spatially related, such as associating night traffic accidents with faulty lampposts. With co-location analysis, you will realize that it can easily help us to find such relationships in space and time, to draw patterns across multiple areas, and can be adopted for various use cases in crime analysis, such as possible crime-prone areas. With new voxel layers, you can represent multi-dimensional spatial and temporal phenomena. As 3D volumetrics visualization, for example, you can create amazing visualization for atmospheric data, geological subsurface area, oceanographic data, or simulation of a space-time cube. In the context of emergency of planning, here we have another example of using voxel representation for plume analysis to assess the extent of chemical contamination in a given time and space. It will also provide better understanding of the time available for effective evacuation in build-up areas. Now, Sharon, I'm sure you also have your own top favorite tools to show us. So let me hand over the time to you. Yes, Boon Hong, you have shared some very useful spatial analysis and visualization capabilities in ArcGIS Pro. I can't wait to share with you my very own favorites too. The first on my list is non-spatial objects in ArcGIS Utility Network. Utilities, especially telecommunications, have a need to represent massive amounts of information all sharing the same geographical location. A fibre cable, as you can see from here, can contain hundreds of strands of fibre, making it a challenge to represent them spatially on the map. In the table on the right, you will see that fibre strands are stored as non-spatial objects. And even though they do not contain the geometry, they are included in the utility network and will honour network rules. The new non-spatial object allow organisations to model and perform complex analysis with a new level of detail. Moving out from the desktop environment, we have also seen new capabilities in our software as a service offerings. My next favorite focuses on drone mapping. When we talk about drone mapping, we are talking about flight planning, data collection, and processing the images to create data that you can use in your GIS. SiteScan is a cloud-based solution providing an end-to-end -end workflow for integrating drones into your operations. The first step in a drone operation is always to plan the flight path of your drone. What you see here is a flight plan for the perimeter scan of a building. You can define the boundaries of the building as well as an offset at which the drone will fly around the building. You will also see that the change in the offset interactively adjusts the data at the bottom of the app. The flight path can then be saved in the cloud. Once the flight path is ready, anyone with a site scan operator license will be able to operate it. The drone will fly to its designated altitude and towards its first waypoint defined in the flight path. Since it's a parameter scan, the drone captures the images at an oblique angle capturing both the walls and the roof of the building. After the images have been captured by the drone, they can then be uploaded to the manager web app to be processed and analyzed. 
The process imagery can then be used to support many different use cases, one of which is in the area of building inspections. It is also applicable in a construction project where you can access various sources of data like your original drone photos or 3D data like the contours or elevation model. You can also have access to a volumetric model where you can see the latest updates of the earthwork, as well as a point cloud view where you can make accurate 2D and 3D measurements. You can also use this map to update your stakeholders by clicking on the Upload to ArcGIS Online button and it can be made immediately available to your organization. Other than construction, another area where site scan can be used is in land parcel inspections for property encroachment. We hope that you are excited about the new capabilities of ArcGIS and we know that you will also uncover your very own favourites too as you explore the latest versions of our software. With every version that's released, there will be new features and enhancements. We've covered a few highlights in the various plenary and technical sessions, but there's a lot more that's included in our 10.8.1 release, and Esri continues to build on top of the feedback that we receive from you. Next year, in an effort to simplify your understanding of our product releases, there's going to be a change in the way we communicate our product releases. We will not be having a release called 10.9, rather it will be under an umbrella term called ArcGIS 2021. There will still be individual product releases, but what's changed is in the way we refer to our releases. What doesn't change is our underlying technology and the fact that we will continue doing innovation. And our focus will still remain on delivering quality and performance enhancements across the platform. Thank you.